Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Inspiration for Today. It's Monday morning, and I'm excited that you're here and that we have a whole new week together. Last week, we did interviews and uh, heard a, a young preacher, <laughs> Bryce, on, on last uh, end of last week. So I thought, what can we do this week? What are we going to do that's different and innovative? And I really, I think I've come up with something, but I would always love your input on what you guys are enjoying, because I want this show to have the variety uh, and yet always be inspirational to us, hence the name, Inspiration for Today. So this week, we're going to study the Bible together, as we've done on a couple previous weeks. So I encourage you, get your Bible, and, uh, and we're going to turn, and we're going to study a book this week that I am pretty sure you pro might never have studied before. And you think, well, how, what is that? Well, it's a, well, first of all, let me back up one sentence, and that is, why make sure that we study the whole Bible? Well, in 2 Timothy 3.16, Paul wrote, all scripture is inspired of God. All scripture, all. And that's the key word. So for us to have books of the Bible that we haven't studied, it's like saying, Lord, why did you put that in the Bible? And uh, I don't want us to be able to say that. So we're going to study the book of Second John. Second John. Do you even know where that is? We never talk about it. We talk about the gospel of John. Sometimes we talk about because there's so many great verses in the book of 1 John. Now, these are all written by the Apostle John, who the Bible says the apostle that Jesus loved. Now, he loved them all, but that's John is singled out a little bit in that way. Well, he wrote the Gospel of John, all about John. He wrote the book of 1 John. He also wrote the book of 2 John. Now, where do we find that? Well, it's at the back of your Bible, right before the book. Well, you know that the book of Revelation is the last book in the Bible. So you can turn there and then start looking back. The book of, you'll come to the book of 1 John probably because it has five chapters. It's quite a bit longer. 2 John is a book of one chapter. And in a way, that's why probably, the, you know, it's not as long as others but it has some important information in it, and that's why we're going to study it, you and me. So, have you found it yet? I want you to, to, to find it. Now, this is going to give us three main things. Even in these few verses, we're going to get some insight into who John was and how he viewed himself. And it's really, that part's important. That's what we're going to study today. And it's important for you and I because the things about John are also true for you and for me. Secondly, which we'll study tomorrow, some encouragement on how we should live our life. And uh, I find those verses really challenging. And then the third is, there's actually a warning that he gives to first century Christians that is true for us today too. And uh, so we'll look at that. I'm, I'm excited that we're going to do it. So, have you found it yet? The book of Second John. And uh, let me read it. The first few, we're just going to read the first three verses today. And then we're going to look at each verse in the next couple of days. Okay? Want to do that? John says, the elder, that's how he referred to himself. To the chosen lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all who know the truth, which lives in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, will be with us in truth and love. I like the le these letters that were written so long ago. And in a way, they're so logical, are they not? Because instead of having to look at the end of the letter to see who it's from, they put it right up front. 
Paul does the same thing in his letters. And uh, so John just referred to himself as the elder. But from the very early of church history, uh, this was always been recognized by the church as being written by the apostle John. So he tells us right off the bat who it's from. That's a neat thing. That's a neat thing. We something we could do, you know, but we don't. We always sign our name at the end. Then he says, to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love in the truth. Now, that's an interesting thing because uh, we wonder about, is it a real lady and her children? Well, many commentators believe this written to a church and, and then the children, the members of that church. We don't know for sure because we're just reading what he wrote. And by the way, I really think he's writing to a church myself. And you'll see why when we read it the, in, in the later verses, uh, the plural that is used almost to me demands that it's a, a bigger group than just a family. But either way, the truths that John talks about, they are so uh, universal that in a way it doesn't matter whether he was writing to a family or to a church. It might well have been a home church, which we would today call a small group, but uh, a house church. That is probably who he was writing to. But he says, and here's the key thing for today. He says, but because of the truth, verse 2, which lives in us and will be with us forever. Who is the truth? Who is the truth? Well, since John wrote, the same person wrote the, the Gospel of John, John quoted Jesus. Jesus tells us who the truth is. In John chapter 14 at verse 6, he says, I am the way and what? The truth. Jesus refers to himself as the truth. And that's who John knows that he is. Because he says, because of the truth, what? That lives in us and will be with us forever. Jesus lived within John through the power of the Holy Spirit. He lives within you if you are a follower of Christ. And he lives within me. It doesn't matter what people say about us or whatever that that is our identity. Our identity is in the fact that we have the God of the universe, Jesus Christ. That's who we follow. And we, through the Holy Spirit living in us, we are his. Nothing can remove us from that. No virus, no anything. No, we are followers of the truth, Jesus Christ. He goes on to say, and he just is welcoming me. He says the same thing to you. Grace, mercy, and peace. Those are three things I want. I know you do too. From God the Father and from Jesus Christ, his Son, who will be with us in truth and in love. That's the secret. John, it's as if John was writing to you and to me. And right off the bat, he says, that truth which lives in us and will be with us forever. Friends, I know this is our hard times, but because we know the truth, we don't need to worry about the future. We have Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And I pray that you do too. I know that most of us watching are already followers of Christ, but if that's not your case yet, then I just encourage you, take a few minutes and pray right now. As this particular show ends, take a moment and just say, Lord, I just give my life to you. And you can know the truth. And the Bible says, and the truth will set you free. Hey, everyone, we'll see you tomorrow. It's going to be great as we study through the book of Second John.